A bird in the hand is always greener than the grass under the guy's bushes. It's a metaphor used by gardeners and landscaping people in general. Hold on, no, no, do it again like Bruce Willis. It's hard. He's so charming in this movie. Like, he's so... <gasps> Like, I miss this Bruce so much. Uh, oh, I, a bird in the hand. Oh, sorry. Go, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> a bird in the hand is always greener than the grass under the guy's bushes. It's a metaphor used by gardeners and landscaping people in general. No, you didn't do it well the first time. I just, it's just such a good quote. <laughs> it is. Like, literally, I we look, we were looking for a quote and scrolled down on IMDb and it was the first one. And I was like, that's perfect. That encapsulates this entire goofy Literally, kid's imagination of a movie right there. Amazing. Welcome to Lord of the Rings, Beyond Middle Earth, our podcast of the rings. I'm so good at this. And we are Can so we... Do we need to copyright that? I think we do. <laughs> TM real quick. Put a TM. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't believe no one's taking that. It's so catchy. <laughs> <laughs> You guys, it's 500 degrees. We're it's both, very but, hot. yeah, and my brain is cooking. No, but yeah. we're in the middle of our Beyond the Middle Earth series where we're looking at the actors from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, other films. And today we're doing Elijah Wood, and we did the vote on Twitter, X, and also on YouTube, and we got North, which arguably, and some of you said that they voted this way because it really is Elijah Wood's movie. Although I don't think I saw Elijah Wood's name in the in the pre credits in like the beginning of the movie's credits. Oh, I might have missed. Well, honestly, if it wasn't, I can't blame it because one of the options was Sin City, and I was like, oh, it's a pretty stacked cast. Whole, I've never seen this movie, so I didn't know anything. Holy shit! And I I tweeted this from the podcast of the Rings. This is the most. You owe me a favor movie I've ever seen. Oh my God. I didn't even look at it that way. It's not like it's a bad movie though. No, no, no. And that's, and I said, I say in the tweet in a good way, but Jess, let me give you the run that Rob Reiner is on right now. And then he makes this movie, uh, director. Okay. So uh, scroll down. Okay. So it starts with 1984. This is Spinal Tap. Basically, wow. like his first full feature, and a cult. Like, it wasn't huge at the time. It wasn't right? huge, but pop culture mainstay. Followed by the Sure Thing, which is a solid movie, and then Stand by Me, another like Stephen King novella classic. Followed by The Princess Bride, amazing. Followed by When Harry Met Sally. Followed by Misery. Followed by No wonder Kathy Bates and Brown Faces in this movie. I, I, I when she came on screen, I was like, oh no, no. followed by misery, followed by a few good men, Come and on. then North. Why? And so like North is the outlier because right after this is American president. So like you can probably end the run at a few good men. But like following one of the best runs a director has had in the history of movies. And so just all the cachet is like, do you literally even if you didn't know Rob Reiner, do you want to be in the next Rob Reiner movie? Yes. Wow. So because like look at what we're looking at. The, also like the depth of his ability to make movies, right? Yes. You're, you're directing all different. kids impeccably. You're directing daytime horror impeccably. You're directing men. <laughs> Courtroom drama. Courtroom like. drama perfectly. I actually um, used to wait on him in um, Brentwood. Really? Yeah. And he's nice. And he was oh, so I nice. Oh, I bet. I bet. But like. He's fucking killing it, dude. So did you have any idea this movie even existed? I didn't. When you kept saying North, I was like, I don't know what this is. Because mm -hmm. like I knew I knew Elijah Wood was a kid actor from Back to the Future Part 2. And someone like jokingly said that. And I was like, come on. He's like playing, you know, a video game in the cafe. Like he's not even in the movie. Right. Um, But I couldn't. I did not know this thing existed. And it's so crazy because this is 94. 
four. So this is right when I'm a kid as well. Right, right. And so I'm surprised like this never got shown to me or suggested or anything like that. It's it's real strange. Is it a kid movie though? I think it's a I think it's a kid friendly movie, but definitely like Rob Reiner's like, oh, you know, parents will enjoy this too. I definitely like like we while we were watching it and I had seen it like I don't even I'm not sure if I've seen it for like front to back in yeah. totality. It is one of those movies that I feel like I caught in the middle on HBO in the middle of the day. You know what I mean? Totally fair. This this seems like a, a midday HBO movie for sure. And, and it watching- feels like I probably saw it on TNT and I was like, well, eh, next. Like, I just because it probably it's there's nothing really to grab you in the middle of nothing. Oh, you're totally wrong. Because if you see Dan Aykroyd and Reba McIntyre doing a musical number in the middle of the day, you're not not watching that. I'm sad. Like, I am truly sad. I didn't grow up with this movie. And it's so funny because I just looked up. I was like, oh, 94. And was he play like a, you know, like a eight year old in this movie? He's like fucking 13. Like Elijah would forever baby face. And it's so funny to see his Frodo faces on 13 year old Elijah. It's Wood. <laughs> so weird. And that's all I could think about is in five years, he's going to begin his journey to New Zealand in five years. It's so it is. That is bonkers. I know. But he's also a stellar actor in this. And this is the perfect, like, I kept thinking of um, Dakota Fanning Mm -hmm. in this movie because this is a perfect movie for kid actors where they get to act like adults. Because, like, kids, when they act like kids, is such a slippery slope because, like, people don't like them or they're like, oh, this kid's annoying or whatever. It's like, yeah, kids kids are annoying for the most part. Um, But when they act like adults, they're like, oh, kids don't talk like this. But in this movie where kids take over the world and, you know, boss around their parents and run for president. John killing it, yeah. Oh, my God, John Lovitz. (laughs) Oh, I like those. (laughs) He's like, I like those. (laughs) What? I've never. What a guy. What? (laughs) What a he's, mensch, as people so say. He's so weird. He has, you know what? He he could have gone the direction of uh, J- Jeff Ross, with the the weird bald guy now that does all the roasts. What's his name? Yeah, like yeah, he, Jeff Ross. Yeah, yeah, he could have been that guy, but John Levitt somehow made himself lovable and <laughs> just so he's so funny. He's so like there's you need to look up because I kept getting these clips on TikTok where I don't know if it was Bill Burr's podcast or John Lovett's podcast, but they're just going back and forth and absolutely ravaging each other. Oh, good. just <sighs> just roasting each other. And it's the best thing ever because Bill Burr is obviously very quick, but John Lovett is, is just like undercutting like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he's just <laughs> it's about it, the voice, though, too. It, his he, voice is so good. And the fact that we get introduced to him literally chasing an ambulance is so funny. There are so many excellent. You're totally right. It's like totally great for adults, too, because there's so many excellent adult jokes because Alex hadn't watched it either. And the whole time he's giggling and it's not like, you know, I made him watch Love Actually like you and I were talking about previously on one of our shows where it's like, it's trash if you don't, so if, you, if you yeah. didn't get it 10 years ago. This isn't trash if you no. didn't watch. It's, and there's only like the Eskimo quote, I say Eskimo, that's because that's what they say. <laughs> K- Kathy Bates and referring to them all as Eskimos and like shipping off the grandfather, which is all satire, don't get me wrong, is the only thing that is um, tasteless. <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, it's of the era, but that doesn't mean it's still right. But you know? it's also through like, I can forgive it in the smallest way where you learn that this is all his imagination. Like he doesn't a, a, a 12 year old kid doesn't know anything about Eskimos. Like, <laughs> but he sure knows that planes skid all the way from Juneau to but Anchorage. That's, but that's the thing is that like, oh, that would be how you land in Alaska <laughs> is you they have the, your, the planes have skis and they run into the, the fucking terminal. Like, so I, did, I was wondering, are the did you recognize the pilots? It I feel seemed like, the, like they should have been. At, they should like, have been. There's somebody. There's somebody. I just don't know who they are because, like, it's such an extra scene of like, hey, thanks, guys. No problem. You know, sometimes we hit the terminal, but it's okay. I'm like, who? Who are you? One who? One hundred. That's exactly what I thought. I for a second I was like, are these one of the co-pilots from Airplane the movie? Like, it's not. Oh, though. that would have been great if it was like Kareem again. Yeah. That would have been so <laughs> funny. <laughs> 
imagine. Um, yeah, we'll have to look that up because I, I too was like, this is gratuitous. Who the hell are these guys? It's a hard IMDb to look through because you're like, oh, there's that guy. Oh, th- th- this guy's in this movie. Oh, my, oh Scarlett Johansson's in this movie. Uh, it's unreal. And then you get to John Ritter as the dad. Anyway. Um, Ben's got a list of questions like for us to like kind of like go through what's our favorite how does this hold up da, 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 da. but like just in general if you haven't watched North like what's it how would you like describe it to somebody that hadn't watched this movie it's, this for me it's so funny because I you know you watch Richie Rich you know look, it's look given at, Richie Rich for but sure but this for me is better mm-hmm. like that and that's the thing is that I missed out on like Monster Squad and I never watched the Goonies and stuff like that and I'm I watched Arguably Monsters. 80s, though, too. Yeah, right? like, but, like, you know, we grew up with those movies. Uh, but it's just, like, if I watch them now, I'm not going to like them. I'm just not. And that's okay. It's not anything against the movie. It's, like, um, I have so many younger friends, like, you know, working at bars in L.A., you work with a lot of younger people. Oh, and sure. they are in love with um, Jim Carrey's Grinch. And, like, that was just, like, <sighs> legitimately a terrible movie. It made all the money. But that's their Christmas movie, and I totally – same, you know, we talked about Love Actually. But watching this movie, I was ready to be like, ah, maybe if I grew up with it. But I had so much fun watching Mm -hmm. this. This is the most – and this is why Rob Reiner is who he is because in anybody else's hands, this is really bad. But you have just the height of Bruce Willis where even if he's not trying, even if he's calling in a favor and cashing in a paycheck – he is so effortless, <sighs> effortlessly charming in a freaking bunny suit. And I was like, oh, okay. That and has a sho- badunkadunk, by the way. The bunny yeah. has a badunkadunk. And then he shows up as like the beach bum and then the the sleigh, like the sleigh uh, driver, like yeah. the cabbie. And just it's like, this is so good. Yeah. Everybody is doing their part. And even the the Eskimo part, which is really tough. Uh, opposite uh, Kathy Bates, I think his name is Graham Green. You recognize him though, because like he's yeah. been in everything. Yeah, yeah, he's such a good actor. He was like the most recent thing I can think of is Wind River. Um, uh, he's a really good uh, indigenous actor, and just every and even like Abe Vigoda is the. <laughs> And then the guy from SVU is the guy like shipping him yes. out to sea. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> this is the craziest. Everybody is somebody. And then the, the fact that they're like trying to murder him, like it suddenly like cranks up a notch. And all of a sudden there's a gun. <laughs> all of a sudden he's like, it literally goes from, you know, the the little giants kid being like, oh, well, what if he dies? And then just like suddenly we're in a gun chase. He's the little Giants kid. It was so hard to find him because I missed his name when the, when the movie first started, and Is so he I had the I, one with the snot bubble. I think so, but it's it's difficult because like he doesn't have a picture on IMDb, so it was like How trying could to. He not. I don't know because he's got a lot of credits, like at least like as a kid actor. It looks like he stopped, you know, when in like ninety nine. Um, but I was just like, what the heck? Like it's so strange to not have Winchell Matthew McCurley. Let's see. Uh, in Little Giants, have... he's newbie. Who's newbie? God, Little Giants is is probably still good because that's Rick Moranis, and like yes, you can't get bad Rick Moranis and Ed O'Neill. Oh my! And Devin Sawa. God, I know it's too good. And what do they call her? The Ice Chest or something? <laughs> the ice Box. Ice Box. Ice Chest. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not far <laughs> off but somehow it's terrible it's so, it's so great it's so much worse so they used to call my brother um the cooler because he was like cool in like tough sports situations okay but, but because of that movie the ice box i thought they meant like a refrigerator <laughs> well i think of the cooler like uh there's a movie called the cooler with I know william exactly h what you're talking about yeah and like he goes to like kind of cool people off at the casino and stuff like he's bad luck so mm-hmm. i'm glad your brother got that nickname like while it was still before, a good thing before yeah. yeah he was he was he was not that kind of cooler uh, maybe he was the cooler for the other teens it's very true okay. very true could okay. be it could be it 
So yeah, I'm I'm thinking back, and he's the kid who had the big snot bubble, which is just real gross when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, it's tough. But Rough. he's so like he's so good in this movie. He's a lot. Like, he's a lot in this movie. He's like yelling, and you could hear him almost like like busting out the mic, and you know he's but like in when you he's. Don't think it's, He'd been getting line reading, so I feel like he would I think be- as the movie went on, he was kind of like feeling himself a little bit. Yeah. Which is fair because he's given like all the big words and all the big monologues, and he's the smart kid and he's bossing John Lovitz around. And he's, you know, got the suit on and he's like, I'm a journalist and doing all these things and holding press conferences. So like he kind of is carrying the movie, or at least like driving the plot yes, of like totally. what's going on behind the scenes. And so I understand why he like Starts going a little bit extra because, you know, everyone's, you know, patting him on the back. Like, he's a kid. He's a kid actor. Well, no, I'm actually taking it to, to I'm taking what you're saying, like, a little bit more from, like, the actor's pers- perspective where he might have just been really nervous in the first couple scenes and then starts to get comfortable. Because, like, that first scene was like, I'm a journalist. I have to fight. I have to know these things. There's, like, tough. It's, like, just not. It's just, I, like, I don't know if they filmed this movie in order what, what his first scene was. But it, if it was his introduction, that's a big scene to get introduced in. Like, you know, you're doing a lot of business. You're typing. You're calling. You're, like, he's he's acting exactly. like Perry Mason over there. <laughs> and so it's, like, it's a tough first scene to, to come in on, especially when Elijah Wood's just, like, you know, what? My just, parents? Just like- <laughs> chilling. And I will say... Elijah Wood early on believes he's having a coronary <laughs> and that's a tough scene too. Cause he's just way overacting and yes. like, and it's so Elijah Wood's parents are played by Jason Alexander and Julia Louis Dreyfus, which is just, incredible. just perfect. It's perfect. Like they're also, it's literally George. It's like George. he's literally George Costanza. And when she wakes up after the coma, she's like moving her ankle and she's doing the Elaine dance. It's very good. Um, And basically North feels underappreciated by them, but North is an excellent kid. And so (laughs) let's just put it this way. And if I were to show this to my child ever, I would warn them. Never talk to the weird Easter bunny that works at the mall. (laughs) Never. And that's such a, it's such a 90s thing where... Mm -hmm. Like, this is all way pre-2001. This yes. is, really is. Like, don't talk to a stranger. Don't let the stranger drive you home. <laughs> like, Yeah. Don't like, get me wrong. It's fine. He's a nice guy. It's Bruce Willis. <laughs> but it, you don't let this, this. This shouldn't happen in real life. This should not happen in real life. And that's the thing. Okay, real quick. Do you think... Norse dad's job is actually trying on pants or is that like how much is Norse imagination because like it is that first scene how he feels or what's really happening because like you know he has like a quote-unquote coronary and like is he is everything in this movie his imagination Hmm. so like to sum it up real quick guys his his parents are ignoring him and so he hires John Lovitz as an attorney to basically become independent but the judge, oh, who's the judge actor? He's, he's so great. Oh, I can't believe I can't think of his name. Um, oh my gosh, I couldn't pull it off if I. And if of course, of course, this cast of a million people is uh, done by uh, by appearance. Uh, it's really fun to Would do. Would you that. have to? But you have Alan to. Arkin. Be- Alan Arkin. Alan yes. Arkin is so good. I'm the judge. Oh, my judge is ruling. And if you have a ruling, it doesn't matter because you're in my courtroom. Like it's so an unnecessary monologue. You know, program. Rob Reiner was just like, go. <laughs> 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 this is my clock from my house. <laughs> yeah. So good. And so basically, he has eight weeks to find new parents, or he becomes an orphan. Um, and like, again, a nineties thing where like orphan is so bad. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> so true. <laughs> and so he flies around the world looking for new parents and everyone's get, stoked to have him as a, as everyone's a, so happy to have him, but everyone's like got their own, like something's wrong. Like something's wrong with each set of parents. And then he learns that, Oh, my parents aren't that, aren't that bad and happy. Like, what a 90s ending where this is a tight 85 minutes. And they're like, North, we're so happy to see you credits. <laughs> okay, okay, bye. Oh, honey, we love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Let's get some dinner. Uh, cue theme song. It's, like, and it's so, but you know what, though? It does cook. We were talking about how, what was the movie that we just watched that cooked to um, Pirates Cooks, right? Yeah. The, you can't have this movie be any longer because even as you're getting to the end and he's being chased by a mob 
the, mafioso. Like, it's so good where like the kid's imagination starts like spiraling out of control of like what would actually happen in this world of like kids taking over, uh, you know, parents doing their chores and uh, parents protesting the right to vote at seven years old and everything. And it's the fact excellent. that he's jet setting around the world. It's so ridiculous, but it's so good. So, yeah, but and the through line is basically Bruce Willis is his guardian angel. Because he meets him at his secret spot and then become like, like you mentioned, he's like, he's a, a guy in each of these scenarios when he's, whether he's in Anchorage or in Texas or whatever. I'm trying to answer your question, but the reason I bring that up is um, early on in the first family he visits, which is Dan Aykroyd and Reba McIntyre in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, boy, did I miss barbecue in that scene. You're just, oh my uh, God, it got me so hungry. Just a big old <laughs> brontosaurus rib on his plate like that. With then fried chicken and corn on the cob and insane amount of potatoes. They I, always do that too, where like there's a, a meme where it's like this like table full of like waffles, eggs, hash browns and everything. It's like every Disney Channel movie had the kid run downstairs, sip a glass of OJ and be like, sorry, I'm late. And then run out the door and it's like, mother Fucker. Eat, eat it. <laughs> Just eat, like touch it. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it's such such bad food waste. Um, but the character Gabby, who is like the ranch hand, like throws up a silver dollar, shoots it for no reason, and uh, cuts a hole in the middle of the silver dollar and says, "Here, you can have it for good luck." Elijah has it at the end of the film. I know, I which love is it. interesting. It's we kid. It's good kid magic, and I right. I love it. So I don't think you know George Costanza as dad as Inspector Number Six for the pants actually tries on the pants. I love where he's like on the phone. And he's got like a rack of blue pants, and like we need to try these pink pants on. Oh, of course you do. Of course you do. I only have two legs. Yeah. And, the, and then you see the rabbi who's practicing he, to see if his pants like every like you basically. It, this is what's so wonderful. The, the, the iconography or the like iconography. The, ima- iconography, the, yeah. the image, imagery of this film is like timeless to me. You you go by each of these men trying on pants and you get to George Costanza as number six, who's a ballroom dancer, who's to see if his ballroom da- like pants yes. stand up. And then like um, it, it's just done so well. It's like every like the when you get to Anchorage, the igloos are like in the little neighborhood cul-de-sac. Yeah, he opens know? his his igloo garage and parks his Iditarod sled in there. Like it's the most kid imagination thing ever. It's Alex, so good. Alex pulled it out perfectly though. The uh, home that John Ritter lives in, which is the last family that Elijah Wood visits, which is like the perfect family. Genuinely, yes. they're perfect. They're nice. No one's like pushing him. No one wants something from him. They yeah. just want to provide a nice home for him. It's the same as his house, but just with different um, place settings. Yeah, it's just nice. It's just nice people in it. Yeah. So, but it is the same exact house, which I thought was interesting, and also, you know, effective cost wise. Um, I'm just trying to think, like, because like yeah. they go to Hawaii. I like, you know. Oh, he's I, in Hawaii for sure. They go to Alaska too. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what they shot in Alaska. Maybe just the airport, like just yeah. like some B roll or something. Because definitely, like you know, when they're on the sled and in the igloo, that's definitely a set, obviously. But like, also so funny when they go to visit visit the Amish people. <laughs> he's just he's just like, oh, I forgot. So like, per, like Elijah's got it. Uh-huh. Elijah's got it in this movie. He yeah. is, as they say, in the pocket. It's just like. His comedic timing in that where he's just like, oh, I've always wanted to have absolutely no technology or anything at all. Uh, sorry, I forgot my churner uh, in the back of the plane. Go, 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 go. And and comedically, the plane takes off horrible graphics Yeah, because you need it to just take off. Ooh, and that's the thing is that like that's so forgivable in that moment because you're like, yeah. I don't want to see a slow takeoff. I want to see a, a plane like just zoom off like a like a sports car. And so you like you just, you just don't care that it doesn't look great. But the editing, the quips, the jokes, it's it's all excellent. And and it also slows down when you need it to. Also, speaking of iconography, when they reveal in Hawaii his uh, po- poster board that's burned into my he's basically like re- replacing um, oh yeah the, my the, crack <laughs> my crack <laughs> so good because even it's so funny because like you as an audience member like 
whoa, that's a lot. And then he goes, my crack? <laughs> that is incredible. And then they're like, well, you know, people come to visit Hawaii and, you know, then they leave us and like they and it's like like kind of prescient with like all the talk of Hawaii now where like how native Hawaiians feel about tourism. And like, I know they're playing it for like, kind of like, oh, we feel like the the forgotten stepchild or something like that. But it's like, there's some truth into how tourists treat Hawaii and how we've colonized it. But then I just love how after all this, like really heartfelt talk, he's like, but what does that have to do with my crack? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It is so weird. Um, when he is getting shot at too, and the guy thinks he kills him because he happens to just be in a borscht truck, that is burned into my brain too. I like, couldn't believe they did that. Like I heard him say, ow, and then like the, the hat fell. So I thought there'd be like a hole in it or something. I didn't expect like a, a bloody looking hat. I was like, oh my God. I know he's not dead, obviously, but like, that's still a pretty graphic image for a kid's movie. And 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 that's where I think like the the little um Winchell kid is great where he's like, mm, this, this is borscht. A, dir- a, a dish a best of coal. Yeah, a Slavic. <laughs> it's like he's got these monologues where he's like saying these big kid words. Yeah. And he's he's cooking as well. Yeah, so let's get into the questions you have lined up for us about this film. Because we could just talk about how wonderful it is ad nauseum, because it is. And I would strongly recommend, if you're watching or listening, pause this, watch it. It's fucking worth it. And I and let me just ask you this really quick before we get into it. You would watch this again. like I would. I would recommend this movie uh, for people that are looking for Elijah Wood's best movie. Like, we'll talk about um, one of the questions is honorable mentions, and we'll talk about plenty of those at the end. But I was so pleasantly surprised. And again, I'm sad I didn't grow up with this movie and I've watched it a hundred times because I would have I would own this movie on like I would have bought this movie on VHS and then to DVD and Blu-ray like this would have been a childhood classic for me. Absolutely. Because like I would recognize like little kid me would be like, oh, that's the that's the guy from Die Hard. He's funny now. Like uh, and and, because that's the thing is that so many people our age didn't watch moonlighting they didn't know funny charming like oh, ladies man sure. bruce willis they sure. knew like john mcclain who we like him but he's a blue collar asshole new york cop uh who beats up you know sophisticated terrorists like we didn't get to see him you know freaking jazz dancing and singing and stuff like that and that's the bruce willis you get where like he so stood out to me in this role where because we've gotten so and i know he's He's very sick right now, and it's so unfortunate. It makes me real sad. But it's such a it's such a loss because. But it's also nice to know we have these. Yeah. Like forever, like where we just like live in the world where Bruce Willis was still able to act and and be charming like this. Um, so good. He's just like the fact that he's and he's just carrying Elijah in these scenes, and Elijah's like keeping up with him, but you can tell he's just like this is just. Uh, this is nothing this is him laying back and i love that he got to go to hawaii too that was probably his stipulation he was like yeah if i get to go to hawaii and you know like walk on the beach for a few takes like i guess i'll i'll do this movie the beatles did that they made help and they're like well we want to go to the alps we want to go to the bahamas yeah. and we'll only do it if that's the case and they and then, then they won out yeah just everybody is so i know this i said this is like a favor movie and usually those aren't great sure but everyone is just like, yeah, I'll shoot for two days. And, and that's Alan it. Arkin giving you the uh, like, you know, he was on like <laughs> it's like Brad Pitt was on set for Deadpool 2 and his payment was a cup of coffee. And he filmed his scene faster than he got his cup of coffee to him. Like you're kidding. No, like there's a scene like he's called the Invisible Man or the Vanisher or some, you know, some invisible superhero name. And there's one scene where he gets elect like you don't think this person exists because they're invisible. But then they, they parachute down and they get electrocuted. And while they're getting electrocuted, you see that it's fucking Brad Pitt. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's fantastic. It's so good. And like they, it came great. out. They was like, yeah, I'll just do it for a cup of coffee. Because I think him and David Leach are friends. And uh, David Leach directed Bullet Train, who Brad Pitt's the star of. Gotcha. Um so he was just like it already in yeah. makeup, went over to the next set. And I'm just kidding, exactly. but like uh, simple like that. Got it. And so it just like all like I can't get over how great everybody is in this movie. And Jesse Smollett, like I know he's not <laughs> the best reputation anymore, but just like 
everybody somebody in this. Who's it's that? wild. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, Jesse Smollett was, uh, he was in that show Power, and then he made some pretty bad headlines. What uh, is he in this? Uh, he's, I think, his name is Adam. I, I'm assuming... Because he's also a kid actor. He's the kid that, oh. like, you never saw me, you never heard me. That like, kid, yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming I was it's actually that. wondering what he was doing now, because he's really great, too. He's like, he is. You, ne- you never saw what you saw, but you did, but you didn't see it. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's such a kid thing. Like, you want to you wanna be, like, you want to be a secret agent. You want to be wanted by everybody. You want to fly around the world and, you know, be a cowboy and go see Eskimos. And, like, it's so great. I love it so much. And you see it all, everywhere he travels in the beginning in his playroom. And it's it's great. It's like, hey, here's the movie. Because, yeah, I will say it has – it does have a little stand by me. Very little. But it has a lot of Princess Bride. Yes, it right. absolutely does. It's literally like the kid from Princess Bride is not sick anymore, and these are his parents, and totally. this is his imagination. Totally. Welcome back. We got to the point now where we're going to check in and ask some questions about the film as it pertains to our Fellowship Frodo boy. Fellowship Frodo boy. Okay, first question. What stands out as the best moment for this actor? In the movie. Yeah, in the movie. In the yeah, movie. yeah. No, I know that's obvious. I, that was a dumb clarifying question on my end. Um, do you have an answer for that? I'd have to say, I think it's I think it's the, the Amish moment. Because, like, that's a hard joke to land. Because you know it's coming. You know exactly what's coming. Like, the joke is there. It's the obvious joke. It's the He's obvious punchline. He's not getting line. off the plane. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, sure. But... It works so well. And especially because I think it's the last place he visits outside of John Ritter. Right. Or that we see. Yes. Yeah. Because like I think after this, he goes to John Ritter's house uh, with ScarJo. Um, and so it's a – and like, you know, we had like two – what was it? It was Cowboy. It was, Ala- it was Hawaii. It was Alaska. And those are the three extended ones. Then we get like a bunch of quick su- succession ones. Um, and so that's the last one. And it's just like, it might get a little tiresome. You're like, okay, how many families is he going to go to? Like you've got John Lovitz and, uh, <laughs> and the, the suit kid, uh, acting up and it's just like, okay, where are we? And then you nail that joke and it's really great. Yeah, I agree with you. I for, I just remembered you see him in China and they're about to give him a haircut. He's not, I thought they were going to do like a little red book joke and, or like something like that, but um, but then he also goes to France, and I love the in joke that French French people love Jerry Lewis so much that he's on every single channel. It's yeah. so funny. But I actually think um, he shines when he is pretending to be the "I wasn't here, you weren't here." Like that whole little moment is very he does. good. Yeah, it's very good. Well, I will, oh, most impressive moment is when he's running to get to his family at the very end when the clock is counting down, and. He is riding his bike across the baseball field and then dismounts and keeps running. I was he almost trips, but great stunt work by Elijah. That's hard to do. Genuine. I actually totally was amazed by the same exact thing. It was <laughs> great. <laughs> like, I was like, like, oh, is he gonna ride into the forest? What's about yeah. to happen? <laughs> like I thought, you know, it was like he'd ride off screen and they cut, but no, like he dismounts while moving and like his little legs keep going. <laughs> Yeah, no. I, I mean, this whole movie is a real standout for him because I, I think I mentioned this before, too. There's a scene in, in a recent um, Family Guy where they're like, hello, the most distracting part of any movie ever, which is the kids actors yes. or whatever. He's not distracting. He's fucking great. No, but, he yeah, fits so well into this movie. Him literally like dismounting off of that bike probably <laughs> is the best part of the entire thing. I totally it's, forgot. I just reminded them myself of that. so good. All right. Who in the fellowship would you recast? As this part. Like, so I would put somebody else in this role. Yes. So it is funny that you said you hadn't watched Goonies because um, that's a huge uh, Sean Astin film. We might do it. I, think I don't you know. Could... It'd, it'd be tough to not do Rudy, but. Well, we have to see what our audience wants. It's very true. Because there's a couple th- films. and it would, It's either Rudy or Goonies, I would say, if you're looking like substantially Sean Astin film. Yeah, but I think I think Sean Astin could have pulled this off as a kid. Uh, I think so too. I think Sean Astin's probably the correct answer, but like, I'd love to see a kid, uh, Billy Boyd or Dominic Monaghan, do this. Like they're 
their their accents in this movie oh would my. go so well. Oh my god. Um yeah, it would be kind of it just would be random. And you know, something about something about um Elijah Wood's earnesty really works in this role and Sean Astin is earnest. I just I just don't know if you would play it with the same I just don't, I'd be curious to see how he plays it is all. No, for sure. Uh Elijah Wood was born with these Big old eyes. Gigantic marbles. And every time he's on screen, he uses them so well. Like he can't help it. I don't he think can't. he can help it. No. <laughs> it's the biggest part of his head. Like <laughs> someone I know um is one of the most intelligent, smartest, prettiest women I know. And um she worked at a Starbucks when she first came to LA. And Elijah was into her and they went on a date and she said his eyes were just something that she couldn't handle, <laughs> like in the best way. Yeah. But like it was it was so intense, I'm sure. Because like, I mean, I'm sure he's a very attentive person. And so just imagine like, mm hmm. So tell me about yourself. No, go ahead. I, oh, my God. That's so interesting. It's like it'd be tough. Like and not, baby blues, baby blues, baby, like piercing. Like when you have a back and forth with Kate Blanchett of like eyes and eyes and eyes and eyes, <laughs> like, like ah. well, yeah, the Arnold. Well. Okay, uh, next question. Put the fellowship in this movie. Oh, that's a really tough question. So Elijah Wood stays where he is. Uh, and I, I wish we would have done. I just came up with this question and I kind of want to do it. Uh, we can do, we have to do all the questions for pirates, but I'd like to do this question for pirates if we have time. Oh, that's really, really good. Yeah, uh, as a nice okay. little bonus. So, so I think okay. you make Ian McKellen, Bruce Willis. I like that. Uh, honestly. Because the wizard aspect and always there, just like showing up. Yeah. And... John Rhys Davies is uh, the mob guy trying to kill him for sure. You see? <laughs> Sure, that's fair. Vigo, or, oh, or is Vigo. I was going to say Sean Bean is Bruce Willis, because I feel like Sean Bean, like, can have that gentleness to him. Oh. And that, like, that charm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, There's a little just too much, there's a little too much seriousness to him, but that's all I've seen him do. I'd love to see zany Vigo Mortensen and zany Liv Tyler as Norse parents, like, Vigo being a... a (laughs) Fitter number six. Like, I'd, I'd love it. <laughs> he would love it, too. You know that. And that's the thing. Like, all, I feel like all these actors would be so game for this. Um, I think. Who's John Lovitz? That's the tough one. That's the tough is one that, for me. P- is that Mary or Pippin? Is it? No, because that's not right. Is that not Gimli? It could be. I, I could see. You it's know what? Tough. I could see John Reese Davies. <gasps> Elrond? Hugo <laughs> Weaving, yes, yes, As but like Hugo scary. Oh my yes, God. I want to see Australian Hugo Weaving uh, in this role. Is he Australian? I thought he's. I believe English. so. Yeah. Oh, is, maybe. You're probably he... right. I, I, I always just assumed England. Um, maybe England claims him because he's so wonderful. Um, oh no, uh, English Australian. So you're, we're we're both right. We're both right. I like this. I like that world. Um. Yeah, Liv Tyler and Vigo as the parents is very funny. Um, who's like Reba? Is Reba Kate Blanchett? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> she, no, I... he's Celeborn and um, Galadriel, John Ritter, and the like the end parents, like the perfect end parents. No, I, I love Kate Blanchett doing a country number. I love <laughs> it so much. I want to see her do it so bad. Like, I just don't you think can't. How dear would be Dan Aykroyd then? <laughs> yes, I like that. Um, so who have we not cast? Uh, Sh- I think Sean. I think Sean Astin would be a great. Um, is his name Winchell? Winchell. Yeah. I think he'd be a great Winchell. I love that instead of saying Machiavellian, John Lovett says it's so Winchellian. <laughs> it's, it's such an. You have to be like paying attention that this kid's and that's name the thing, is like, Winchell. So, like that's the thing that that's an adult joke, and so is like the Jerry Lewis French joke. I was just like, okay, they're smoking <laughs> cigarettes in front of him. Here's Jerry Lewis on every fucking yeah. It's it, but it's so good for that reason. Like that's why we can watch it now. I so I. Listen, I know I was pushing hard for North, but I actually really was pushing more for Fifty First Dates. But when it be uh, not Fifty First Dates, that's the Sean Astin Eternal movie. Sunshine. Eternal Sunshine, because I love that movie. Oh, I it's just so good. Do. 
But this is an Elijah movie, and I was excited for you to see it for all this. Reason. I think probably Eternal Sun. We'll get to honorable mentions uh, in a sec. But I do think Eternal Sunshine is probably his best movie that he's in. But I think uh, someone uh, who was at Ulrich did mention the Faculty. We forgot about the Faculty, the horror high school movie with aliens. <laughs> I do think I saw that, and I don't know if I want to watch it now again. <laughs> it's totally fair. It probably hasn't aged well, but it's a it's a decent, like, trashy horror movie. Like, sure. He's done a lot, and he's got one coming up right now that's going to be him in New Zealand, too. It could be very fun. So. Hope so. Okay, um, did we get everybody in the fellowship? No, because we didn't, we didn't put Dominic or... I think Dominic and Billy Boyd take jesse smollett's place uh -huh. and like it's like a back and forth like yes. they're, they're like finishing each other's sins like you never saw us no you never saw us yes we were never here like <laughs> like you have like them just like rat tat tatting through that scene perfect and and sean astin is winchell we did you said that that's perfect. oh uh, orlando bloom who's orlando bloom oh crap is he <laughs> scar joe <laughs> we'd love to have you <laughs> Oliver's sad too. <laughs> it's so good. No, and now um, I have someone to play catch with. What if, this is so. This is not accurate. But um, uh, Orlando Bloom as a a Vigoda. No, wait. Who's the judge? Oh, Alan R. Oh, <sighs> that's tough. Cause, cause I. Oh, okay. I I take it all back. Christopher Lee's the judge. You're so right. Orlando Bloom is Bruce Willis. Okay, and I can Ian, see it. Right? And Ian McKellen is a Vagoda. I like that. I like That's that. That's much better, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that everybody? I think so. Uh, were we putting John Reese Davies? Uh he's the the assassin. The lawyer? Oh, the assassin. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I like this. This is good. That was a good question. Good question. Yeah. Good and we'll question. go. We'll go back at the end real quick and and do pirates because I think like you know pirates is a, a a big cast too. I want to I want to do that one. Yeah. Um. Does Peter Jackson directing make this movie better or worse? Worse. I think so. Because you're I don't talking know how about often early. We're gonna, yeah. If you're if especially in this era. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that Rob Reiner maybe now like when he's not you know directors lose their edge like. Even Scorsese and Spielberg trip up sometimes, but Rob Reiner's cooking right now, dude. Like that fi <laughs> that movie run that we mentioned, you can't beat it. It is tough to beat. You're you so can right compare to bring it that to up. others, but I don't think anyone can say there's like a better one. No, and I'm also thinking like he Peter Jackson up to this point is making B horror films too, and yes. so we may be getting too much camp in this, and he. I will say the stakes would probably be very high when they're trying to kill Elijah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I feel like bystanders would have gotten shot or so like the hot dog man would have died. Like. <laughs> totally. Totally. Um, I will say too, I just forgot to mention this. I think that Elijah is killed in, in the, the dream sequence because you wake up when you die. Oh, for sure. He like, he definitely like dies. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Um, could the main characters of this movie deliver the ring to Mount Doom? Oh my. Yes, North could. I think North could as well. I think Winchell could as well. No, Winchell wouldn't give it up. Oh, that's, you know what? You're right. Good point. W Winchell, Winchell just, would take the power. Yeah, Winchell is. Winchell's Gollum. <laughs> no, no, John Lovitz is Gollum. And Wait, did we cast Gollum? Do we need to cast Gollum in, the, in this? Is it Gollum or Andy Serkis? We don't need to. I feel like that's, that's a tough distinction. Well, no, I mean, Andy, I think you put Andy Serkis in the film. Though. If Andy Serkis is in the film, he's Bruce Willis. That's true. Well, God, you don't think Orlando is like a better cast for that? I think I think it's it's tough because I don't know, because like Andy Serkis just gives that. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> Andy Serkis is is um, is Kathy Bates in brown face. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I will like that's one that's hilarious. But Andy Circus is um, Reba's husband. It's Dan Reba. Aykroyd. It, yeah, Dan so? Aykroyd. I okay. couldn't. I think. I think Andy Circus and Kate Blanchett are are. I together. don't know if Dan Aykroyd had stopped doing coke, but I I sure hope he didn't before this film. Because <laughs> it's oh they are cooking it, too. It probably paid for the coke. What are you talking about? Uh, no, one hundred percent. And that musical number is great. It's so good. It's great. 
Um, and Reba, we just don't, we don't appreciate her enough. I think, um, I think, yeah, I think, um, uh, I think North and Bruce Willis could easily deliver the ring. You're talking about Sam. You're talking about Frodo. You really are. You yeah. just really are. Also, Sam is such a basic name. I know I was giving people hard times for Robert. And, you know, it, if you're listening to our House of the Dragon podcast on our po- Patreon, Sam's just a basic ass name. <laughs> yeah. Gimli, right. Boromir, Aragorn, Pippin, Mary, Sam. Sam. <laughs> Sam. Sam. <laughs> All right. I know it's Sam Wise, but still. But it's still Sam. Also, um, I know I don't want to do pirates for all these questions, but Jack Sparrow could get the ring to Mount Doom. I don't know if he would. He'd definitely think about keeping it, but he'd loop de loop, double backflip on a on a swing rope and he would do it, but it, there would be so much backstabbing on the way that, yes. like, you wouldn't know what his end game He'd was. He'd end up, like, owning Rohan or something like that. Like, <laughs> Sure. <laughs> he would commandeer Rohan and, yeah, Gondor. Honestly, Jack Sparrow would convince the Eagles to just drop him off in Mount Doom. If anyone yes. could do it, it'd be him. <laughs> yes. That's a that's a good, good retcon. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's not just because Frodo is played by Elijah Wood. He's a good his his bent is toward good. His yes. North's bent is towards good and he's capable. And um and Bruce Willis is not the kind of um mall worker that would murder you. So no. I th- think he would t- actually help him. I think so too. And then our final question, uh what are some honorable mentions for this actor's best movie? Yeah, yes. So it is 50. It's um I can't it's just completely conflating the two. Eternal Sunshine. Um, cause he's also a little weasel in that. He's a little fucker in that movie. He is a little fucker in that. It is crazy. Like how hard he swerved. Cause my, my suggestion was always Sin City. Cause let me look at, let me look at his IMDb. Oh, real he's, quick. he's like, a villain in that too, right? He's like a cannibal in that Ugh. movie. And it's like just the craziest thing of like, what a swerve after that. So, okay. A lot so. of actors don't do well with that. You know? Yeah, because Sin City was so, oh Green Street Hooligans. I totally forgot that I was don't like even such know what a. The hell are you talking about? That is the most. That is like how people misunderstood Fight Club. That's the millennials' misunderstanding of Green Street Hooligans, where it's a it's a stars him and Charlie Hunnam, uh, the guy from Sons of Anarchy, and oh, oh, oh. you know who Charlie Hunnam is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's. Elijah Wood's an American who uh, moves over to England with his sister and her sister, his sister's brother-in-law, like, is a, a soccer hooligan. And he gets caught up in that where, like, you know, they go What's to... a hooligan mean? Like, they go to soccer matches and they fight the opposing fans. Like, that's, like, their oh. thing. Like, they're basically gangs, but they're called hooligans. And he learns, like, how to fight and he learns, like, stand your... Like, the, the whole thing is, like, stand your ground. Because they're like always outnumbered and stuff like that, um, and it's it's a fun movie, but definitely like that got you know like teenage boys like oh yeah stand your ground let's go fight. <laughs> it's just like that. The whole point of the movie is that yeah you stand your ground, but like fighting isn't the answer. That's the whole point of the movie at the end. Um, no, but, but it's a real, but it's Paul's a good movie. the hero in Dune. Paul dude. is the hero unequivocally. It's like right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I will be curious what you think when you get to book six, though. So yeah, <laughs> no, serious, seriously, when you get that far, it, it's all very complicated. So, um, but yeah, Eternal Sunshine is definitely up there. Um, not his movie, but he's great in it. He's great in it. And that, like I said, Sin City, because, you know, green, like of, other than that, you know, he goes Eternal Sunshine right after small part. But like Sin City, he was like in, you know, they're like. Uh, Elijah Wood, Mickey Rourke, right, right, uh, right, right. like boom, and so like, also oh, another Elijah Wood's Bruce in this. Willis movie, another great Bruce Willis movie, and he's like this cannibalistic person who's like chopping the heads off sex workers. You're like, oh my god, my what is Frodo doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Although, uh, and then Wilfred actually, is, Wilfred's a great show. It it had um I remember watching an, an episode right, but like mm-hmm. um. It lasted a good while, and it was, like, just the right kind of weird. I feel like him and Daniel Radcliffe both did well after major movies for them at their young age. Like, yes. because they also chose to, like, just kind of follow their heart song a little bit. No, they, like, they went back to what they know of 
being weird dudes. Yeah. They're yes. just weird. They they weird dudes who love to act. Yep. And like it's it's the same thing with like right. You could throw Robert Pattinson in there. Even like he's more I guess like traditionally good looking than them. So they, and, like, he got more opportunities than they did. But like until Batman, he was doing the weirdest things you could do. And that was the thing is that when he got announced as Batman, everyone's like, oh, Batman Twilight. I'm like, Twilight's like 12 years old. If you haven't seen what Robert Pattinson's been doing, please enlighten yourself because he's been doing nothing but small, gritty, independent movies working on his craft. Right. And that's what Elijah Wood and Daniel Radcliffe did where there's like, yeah, I like to uh, – there's a movie I mentioned. Um, I don't know. I don't think it was on the podcast, but we were talking about it. I don't feel at home at in this world anymore. Uh, right. Really, I, if it's still, it's a Netflix original, so it's still on there uh, with Melanie Linsky. If you guys have not seen it, it's him and Melanie Linsky, and he plays kind of like a Dwight Schrute character. He's really, really good in it. How it's funny. a funny! Re- it's a really good movie. I I highly recommend it. Um, uh, what else is there? Like, he's got a pretty big filmography because like he just stop does. Working. Yeah, he just works. He's just a worker. Happy Feet was on there, and someone like was like, "Well, these are you know we had North Eternal Sunshine, Sin City, Happy Feet," and someone was like, "Uh, I don't know. The rest are North is the only Elijah Wood movie. The rest just have Elijah Wood in it." I was like, "I'm sorry." Happy Feet is his movie. He is Happy it, Feet. <laughs> he is literally Happy Feet. He's a tap dancing, tap dancing, environmentally conscious penguin. Get out of my mentions. <laughs> But stay in there because we need the controversy. Directed by George Miller, who directed Mad Max. <laughs> oh, that's wild. Yeah. Crazy, um, crazy filmography. What as I well. do like about this series, too, is like when we're like not doing Rings of Power or something, like this is easy to come back to. So we can always come and check out another movie by him. Yeah. Because I, I don't know if we'll fi- finish like, you know, everybody we want to talk about before that, uh, before Rings of Power drops. And that's obviously going to take our weekly time along with House of Dragons on Patreon. Subscribe to the Patreon, guys. Um, but I, he has a great, great filmography, a great yeah. IMDb. He is an accomplished actor. And yes, he will be forever known as Frodo. But I encourage everyone to check out his other works. Because I think that's right. Big and small, child actor, adult actor, he's got some great, great stuff in there. Uh, and I really, really am surprised of how much I enjoyed North. <laughs> it's. I'm so glad we got to do this. Let's uh, round out this show before we end it with a couple of the questions you wanted to answer for uh, Pirates. Uh, yeah, I just want to do... Um, uh, recast the fellow, put the fellowship in pirates. Oh, okay, okay. So we have we, we keep Orlando Bloom, keep Orlando Bloom as Will Turno, right? Will Tono, <laughs> Will Tono, <laughs> Will Tono. Um, I think you put Liv Tyler as uh, Kiara. Swan. Yeah, yep. Um, I think you put Vigo as oh, Jack Sparrow is so tough. I- I'm okay with putting him last for now. Um, I think, I think John Who's Reese the Davies, dad? uh, the dad is, oh, Christopher Lee, I think it's Barbosa. Yes. Yeah. Maybe the dad is Ian McKellen. I, I, I think you do Hugo Weaving again, or is Hugo we- Weaving like the, the, the constable think, guy, not the constable. What's his name? I, I think we leave Hugo Weaving if we have extra stuff. Cause he's not uh, part of word, the fellowship. Word. Okay. 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 Um, but I put, if you want to argue against it, I'm totally fine with it, but I put Ian McKellen as Jonathan Price as the dad. No, no, I think that's right. Commander I Norrington, right. I say, is Sean Bean? Yes. 100%. Um, who else we got? Oh, the two pirates, the, the eyeball pirate uh-huh. and the parlay, is Dominic and Billy, done, easy. Swish. Yeah, alley-oop right there. <laughs> um, who's Sean Astin in this? Um, is he the hot pirate? Is he the hot, um, the jawline pirate that gets one line? <laughs> yeah, or he's like, That's the best pirate I ever saw. Yeah, it's no, very who's possible. Zoe Saldana? Is Zoe Kate Blanchett? Yeah, yeah, where you're like, Where you know, two years later, like, Wait, she's in this? <laughs> John Reese Davies is the guy who's like, Don't be singing that. And he's like, ends Yes, up- I was gonna say that. I was gonna say he's, um, oh, what's his name? I always forget that that character's name, but he's he's the second in command. Um, like where, like he grows up with Elizabeth and like, uh, don't be, he's the one sleeping with the pigs. Uh, I can't think of that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you smell like it. You smell bad. Yeah. 
Um, that's very good. That's totally John Reese davies um, So we have John Reese davies We don't have Vigo yet. We don't have Vigo. He's Jack Sparrow then. He's got to be Jack Sparrow. Like, I'd love – I don't know how – I. Th- but that's the thing is that – Vigo fits. Aragorn is not Jack Sparrow, but like Vigo's a weird off kilter dude. He is. Yeah, he really is. Um and and it is just how the director reigns him in. Really. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying like he's unstable. I'm just saying like he's malleable. I, I'm saying he's unstable. He's <laughs> okay, like, that's your have you, those are your words. But like, have you seen like all the cast that were like, yeah, whenever we on a red carpet, Vigo would just come up and headbutt you. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Like I'm not, I'm not saying unstable like in a dangerous way. I mean, headbutting is dangerous. Yeah, That's like Manu Bennett, who's like a a giant, like he plays a uh, Bulger or Azog. I can't remember which one. He's like a big old dude. He's like, yeah, I almost got knocked unconscious Fuck. by Vigo one day. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. That's wild. Um. So you're right that Christopher Lee is um, Barbosa. Barbosa. Ian McKellen is uh the dad. Liv Tyler is Elizabeth. Elizabeth Swan. Zoe Saldana is Kate Blanchett. Again, not fellowship per se, but important. But we've got a role you need, there. You, you need a woman. You got Dominic and what's his face as the, the two. Uh, Rigetti and Pintel is their name. Rigetti and Pintel. Yes. Um, Jonathan Reese Davies is Gibbs. That's his name. Gibbs is the pig smelling fucker. And you got Vigo. Wait, what's Sean? He's Norrington. You said Norrington? First? Yeah. You agreed to Hold it. on. Sean Astin. Sean. Oh, that's right. Okay. Sean Astin. Okay. Who's left? Right. Dang. This is actually tough. This is really tough. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think of who's is left. Is he, like, one of the um, admirals? That like argues with Jack Sparrow at on the dock, and then they shake hands. Like it's like is that, is that sad that he's like relegated we, to those dudes? We are we are going to put Sean Astin, um, David Fincher, Army Hammer style, make them twins, the two British officers that are like give you all the the I don't I'm here to pillage. He's like I said no joking. I don't yeah. think he's joking. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna digitally put him okay. as twins. We're gonna make the, him twins for those two British officers. I think you're wrong, actually. I think he's the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and here I thought you were gonna give me a good answer. Oh. <laughs> Or he's the dog that they try to get the bone from. I mean, he's from. the, the – honestly, the monkey's the next biggest lead. No, like, the monkey is Gollum, is Andy Circus. Yes, the monkey is mo-capped Andy Circus. That You fucking well, nailed it. That is exactly You fucking right. nailed it right there. That was great. All right. Well, thank you to listening and watching this. This is was is very fun. Who are we doing next? We're doing Sean Astin next, I think. Um, does that make sense to do Sean Astin? So we start with Orlando Bloom. Yeah, let's let's do Sean Astin. Like, let's go through. Do we want to go through how? I guess it's like too late to do that. But do we want to go through how the fellowship is announced? Do we want to do Ian McKellen next, and then I know we started with Orlando Bloom. But like, do we want to do Ian McKellen and then Vigo? I'm trying to do hot button things I actually want to watch. <laughs> like, if I if like if I <laughs> you can't say, we're, we're, okay. Well, yeah, we could do. Well, I'm fine with Sean Astin next. So, but, guys, but let but let's find out like how we are actually deciding this from from then on. I think we should make actually make plans. Um, but yeah, Sean Astin, and so we'll put it on Twitter as well so that they can help us decide. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely down. Uh, let us know in the Discord. I'll put up the like the choices. Let me see. Let me look up Sean Aston right now, honestly. And while he's doing that, we just want to thank Jesse Glassby. Can't never say his name for being one. Just call him Austin Roy Two K. No, but that's not his. It's not how he signed up. Three. He is part of our Three Rings for Elves at the ten dollar tier on Patreon. You too can get your name read out poorly at the end of every podcast of the Rings episode. We're also in the heat of our podcast of the Dragons Patreon exclusive podcast where we're watching House of the Dragons. We're all caught up. We're ready for the premiere, which just happened the night before. So make sure you're on our Patreon for that. Also, if you sign up for the $5 tier where you get that podcast, we're doing a seven-day free trial. So you can just listen to all those episodes and then just peace out if you don't want to give us $5. Right? I mean, get, what? Uh, 
listen to the to the review of season one and if you like what you hear join us week to week because we're going to be banging out those episodes and then as soon as house of dragon season two is done we're going right into game of thrones and i'm really excited to, to rewatch all those same um so that's just different ways you can contact us or you know support us like ben said we do have a discord that's going to be in the liner notes of the show we can engage with us in way basically the majority of the way people engage with us is making fun of my bad calls which is fun for everyone except for me and you can follow us on social medias or give us five star reviews wherever yes. you're listening so to i us. think the choices for sean austin if you have any input let me know i think it's going to be encino man oh rudy i forgot about that one goonies and um 50 first dates i think you're just throwing that in there for 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 me but it, but he's got a big part in it like he's he's the brother and it's a great adam sandler movie yep and he gets ripped in it it's really weird it's he like, is pretty buffing i can't lie yeah no it's and he's very funny he's very silly he's very it's a, one of my favorite movies of all time uh, let us know in the votes. Let your voice be heard. Like and subscribe. And until next time, they are past meet again. 